Hello, everybody. Carla Nicole. So, uh, happy Sunday. Welcome to Live with Carla Nicole. Um, this episode, um, we are going to be talking about um, the true pillow fight. <laughs> so, um, as you guys know, um, you know, I am Carla Nicole, a single mother of two. I have a daughter that is 18 and a son that's nine. And um, my spiritual mission is to encourage people to live out their purpose and definitely live out their um, passions and their plan. Hey, Slick Shorty. Good afternoon. Glad you're here. So um, everybody that's a part of my show knows that I encourage that when you come on the show, you bring your pen and your pad because the information that I give on this show um, essentially is easy to um, apply in life. There's various different lessons that I give on my show. There's also various different things that I would like you guys to make a mental note of. And um, one of the things about me is I encourage people to write down what I tell you because in the event you can't just jump on my, my live or go back to my video, you will have your notes available, readily available to you. And you can actually um, revert back to them and kind of look at them and see exactly what it is that um, you can use to apply to your concerns, your issues, your turbulence in life. So you want to make sure that you write this stuff down. Because like I said... Some of the stuff that I'm giving you can be applicable to various different situations, various different things that goes on. So you want to make sure you got your pen and you got your pad. Okay. I have mine. I know I encourage everybody else to do it, but I also follow uh, my own rules so I can remember what I'm saying also. Um, thanks, Shorty, for the compliment. I appreciate that, love. So um, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm so glad you're here. You know, um, the beautiful thing about this series, which it, the, the whole reason that I'm doing this series, which is the Alone series, is to encourage people that are alone that just because you are alone doesn't mean you have to be lonely. It doesn't mean that you have to feel grim. doesn't mean you have to be depressed. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to feel inadequate or discontent because you are not with someone. Um, actually, I encourage people that if you are alone, this is a perfect time to um, basically, because you don't have an obligation to someone else's desires, wants, and needs, you can now focus on what your desires, wants, and needs are, what things you want to fix, what things you want to um, improve on. And this is the perfect time to do that because, you know, um, in life, we're parents, you know, we're spouses, we're girlfriend, boyfriends, we got all kinds of obligations, we're employees, we're kids. So with those various roles in life, a lot of times we don't realize that, you know, uh, we sacrifice self a lot, a lot. We do not really put ourselves first which is essentially not a good thing because you should definitely put yourself, um, you know, and, and encourage yourself to be um, priority in your life because there's only one you. And you really, honestly, you cannot really help other people if you're depleting yourself. Um, so it's important that um, you are mindful that even though you're alone does not mean it has to be dreadful doesn't mean it's just, you know, the end of end of the world, nor does it mean that it's a life sentence, you know, of imprisonment to be alone. It is OK. Matter of fact, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful time to be alone because it's actually a time to where you can do for self. So with that said, um, this episode today um, is going to be about the true pillow fight. Okay, so um, the reason why I was encouraged to do this episode was I happened to be, you know, scrolling through Facebook. And as I'm scrolling through Facebook, I happened to run across a poem from a beautiful young poet. And um, I was like, man, her poem was 
really powerful. She talked about the struggle of being alone and the struggle of sleeping alone. <laughs> and I laugh about it because I had to reflect back to after my divorce, what I went through after, you know, I had been, um, you know, uh, alone. So I was like, oh my God, how do you actually get through the problem of getting away from being um, with someone to now transferring into being alone and sleeping alone? So the beautiful thing about that is we get to sit back and really pay attention to what steps we take in life and what actually we have to deal with when we are alone or we transition from being partnered with someone to being alone. So um, I think it's very awesome that, um, you know, we do that. So I really think it's important that we um, think about that and we really consider, okay, how do we do this? How do we really um, focus? So anyway, I saw her poem and I was like, ooh, I like that. You know what I'm saying? I really, really like that. Um, the beautiful thing about it is you just never know who you will come across. You just never know what you will, what it will take to inspire you to do what you do. And so when I saw her poem, I was moved like, ooh, this is pretty hot. I'm glad she's speaking candidly in her poem about the struggle of, you know, her pillow fighting and all of that. So I think it's really awesome that I had the opportunity to actually meet her. And so I want to welcome you, Carrie. I was just giving you an introduction. How are you, love? <laughs> I'm good. Can you hear me okay? I'm almost at home. I apologize about all this. You're fine, love. Yes, we can hear you just fine. I was telling them that you inspired this episode today. Um, <laughs> it's just awesome. You know, um, your poem was beautiful, but it was heartfelt. And, you know, I think it's a challenge when we have to deal with our aloneness. <laughs> we all have a certain type of transition we have to go through with alone, being alone. And so um, I want us to talk a little bit about what inspired you to write the poem. I also want you to give us a little background on how you, if you are still there, <laughs> if not, wonderful, how'd you get out of that? And then um, if you can, we would love to hear your poem. But, you know, this is one of the beautiful things about this platform that um, I've actually had the opportunity to to meet beautiful people as yourself that has went through some, some challenges and some, and some trials. But your art actually brought out um, the challenge. Well, I, I want to say I appreciate that. Uh-oh, I think we might have lost her. But when she returns, we'll talk back to her. Um, <clears throat> to give us a, just a second. We don't want to lose her. Okay, there we go. Give us just a second here. Okay, we're going to give her just a second. But one of the beautiful things about this whole situation is we're able to really learn about people's struggles. We all have some, right? We all have something that kind of can be challenging that we have to deal with. So um, one of the best things, and I think she can agree, that you know, when you are in your purpose and when you um, have an artistic side to you, you can actually pull from that any type of painful experience and create something so beautiful and, and, and amazing. So, you know, I think it's imperative that even though when we go through trials and tribulations, we don't just live in, in a um, solitude or in a sadness because of it, but rather we uh, learn the lesson from it. So I just want to uh, make sure that we, focus on the fact that sometimes we have challenges and we have trials and tribulations. So it's imperative that we focus on that and we don't get too bogged down with the fact that having a true pillow fight in life can be not just losing a relationship. It could be all kinds of things. 
So if you guys have your pens and pads, I want you guys to write something down really quick. Um, I want you to write down a loan series and make it kind of big on your on your notes. Like so, like like there. Write down a loan series. Okay. And then write down um true pillow fight. The reason why I'm having you to write it down and to um, add it to your notes is because it allows you um, to remember what it was that we were talking about that day. So the true pillow fight is the reason why um, we are having this, um, this live and what was the inspiration. Okay, we got you back. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's, my signal picked up and dropped as I was driving, so I apologize. I'm actually parking as we <laughs> you're fine love so i'm sorry we lost what you were what your mind was going to uh fill us up with um before you we lost you well as far as where the peace comes from i think as you were stating when i was listening in everyone has that period where you go from being able to have somebody there with you to being able to have that feeling of another heartbeat another piece of warmth um, just somebody being there with you till that point where you realize you roll over one day and it's it's a little bit colder over there. There's nobody that's going to hug you back over there. There's nothing. And right. for a long time, I slept with crap on that <laughs> side of the bed. I had a relationship. Like literally, if, it, if I was studying, it would be books everywhere. It would be papers everywhere. Anything right. that kind of filled up that side. So I didn't yeah. have to even roll over side I knew something was there so I wouldn't even want to be bothered with it so I didn't have to think about it and it went from being clothes and piles of books and things of that nature to being pillows because right. pillows kind of more simulated they kind of were a little squishier you know they mm -hmm. didn't necessarily hug but they gave the feeling of somebody yeah. and I don't care it is or how you feel you've gotten over something, everybody still wants somebody. Yeah. So in conversations with my friends, I moved out on my own for my first time. My son's getting ready to go to college. Um, in and out of long-term relationships that didn't work, ended up back home with parents is basically the backstory. Yeah. And so this is my first on her own experience. Okay. In that comes with the real emotion of dealing with the being on your own. So the emotion is an old emotion, but it's a new right because when my friends would FaceTime me, they'd be like, God, you're never in the area of your room that has your bed. You're never, you're always on the couch. You sleep on the couch. We call you, you're rolling over on the couch. And I had to be real. I was like, I just don't see a reason to rush to bed anymore. After right. you've been with somebody so long, going to bed is like going to that peaceful spot. You're, you're creating life there. You're being passionate there. You're joking over ideals. You're being a big kid. It becomes home inside of a home. So when you don't have that, sometimes just actually the physical act of being able to get your ass off, off the couch, excuse my language, really? and go to your bed and crawl into the bed and be okay with that sometimes can become a little hard. Yes. And in doing that, people find their own way because you would wake up and cry at night, but you would cry into your pillow because your pillow's there. So it still gave you some solace. It's something yes. that you could just wrap your arms around was there. Oh, yes. So after speaking with so many friends who had noticed I'm always on the dang on couch and I hardly ever go, first off, I live in a loft. Let's get this straight. Okay. So I don't even really have a, a bedroom per se. My TV's mm -hmm. not up there and all that other good stuff. It's just a place to sleep. Right. So the couch became convenient, but it's more comfortable. So in writing in, in hearing all that, it just made me think that I have. I've slept with so many things on the side of the bed because there was nothing else there. I had gotten used to relationships that catered and had somebody there, you know, having to look over on that side and just being able to feel warmth and that not coldness. And once you don't have that, it becomes a colder spot. 
Yes. And it becomes a little harder to get used to sleeping on the other side because that was that person's side. Mm -hmm. It becomes a little harder to put your stuff over there on that nightstand because that's where their stuff went on that nightstand. Mm -hmm. It becomes a little harder to replace the pieces of yourself that kind of left that relationship, left that bedroom, and left that side of the bed. Right. And so you find a way to do so. And that, for me, became pillows. I have... I still to this I still have like nine pillows on my bed <laughs> and it's not necessarily because I'm still in the same emotion right. but because every now and then I do want to be able to roll over and it be something there okay. every, I don't care how hard how tough you are somebody right. wants something there right and so that's kind of where that piece grew out of was the fact that I, I, I don't rush to bed. I, I sleep with pillows on the other side of the bed because nobody's there. There's nobody to tell me things are going to be okay after a long day. There's nobody to kind of soothe that pain over. There's nobody there. So I have to find a way to be okay with the fact that I got to be alone in this bed by myself and do it right. by myself and yes. still get my ass up and carry on like nothing ever happened, like it yes. didn't hurt, like I'm not breaking down on the inside like that bed does not remind me of every moment we spent together right and well so I love this well I love what you said and I, I think this is this is the reason why your poem resonated with me was because I'm doing this series to tap in on the emotional part of being alone see I think a lot of times when I when I was spiritually led okay to do this alone series. I will tell everybody. I told the spirit. I argued with the spirit. I don't want to do that. Do you know how grim this is going to be? How am I supposed to promote people to want to talk about this? How am I supposed to do this? You know what I mean? I was like, I don't know how I'm going to reach people. I don't. But then, you know, um, as I've started doing it and showing people there's so much you can be doing, I'm like, if you're alone, there's a lot we can achieve. I didn't realize that at first because it was my perception of the word alone, period. Most people hear that word alone and there is a silent, if you think about it, there's a silent depressive sound to even the name alone. The word alone carries an energy of sadness, grim, um, you know, just unfulfilled all of those things you pull when you say I'm alone so I had to figure out a way how can I tap in well what I loved about your poem is you allowed me to go into the mind of a woman that I've never met before and I was able to tap into what your inspiration was to write about it because obviously number one it was important to you it was something that you were dealing with and it wasn't something you wanted to outwardly talk to people about. This is, this is, it seems like it was just very private. And so I'm <laughs> like, wow, this is what I need to know about because nobody's going to tell me, oh, Carla, I hate being alone. Let me tell you, I do this, I do that. Nobody's Carla, gonna I hate it. <laughs> right, right. So I'm like, I, hate well, how I, I cried this morning. Oh. I'll be very honest. I cried this morning. I was at my best friend's house and I was like, I can't believe I even said yes to this because how do I talk about being alone and how to cope with that when I don't even necessarily know that I've done that part of it? I was like, and it like, makes me feel crazy that this was a poem that was about pillows, just the emotion was there. I said, but at the same time, now I got to talk about it. I said, and I don't necessarily want to talk about it because how do I tell somebody, yeah, outwardly I'm okay saying I'm okay, but there are times where once like, I shut that door, I'm not necessarily okay. okay. And there are people yes. who are hearing that because they've been around through the process and they feel like you should be so much further along. But you have to sit there and be realistic with yourself. This was yes. this portion of my life that had this much of an impact. And I can't just let that go. And once I go behind that door and I close that door and it's just me, them four walls, them pillows, that TV, that notebook, whatever it is, that's all I got. Whereas right. some of y'all may have friends, dogs, my son's about to go to college, so he's not even with me. So I don't even have my son. Right. You know, you've got yeah. significant others, whether you want to be with them or whether you don't, you may be alone right. in your relationship. And that's a whole nother yes. topic. But, yes. you know, it's those things like how do you sit there and say, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Right. I'm okay. I'm okay. But no, nah, I, I don't I like you to come on here. But no, I'm glad you're saying the honesty because that's what we need to hear. No, Carla, I'm not okay. I'm still struggling. <laughs> that's what we want to know because listen, do you understand 
the hard part about being alone is not that it, that we're necessarily alone per se, but we need somebody to be able to relate to this madness. I don't think people really understand there is a madness to the component of aloneness, especially when, especially from where I've come from, you know, I, I my family, my whole family was married. My parents, my grandparents, my uncles and aunts, all of that. I have been around a component of nothing but marriage, unity, coupling. That's all I knew. So it was hard for me to really grab a hold of being alone, being divorced. Let me tell you, after you wrote your piece, I wrote an article about it. And I was <laughs> like, well, now that I think about it, I'm like, that's the heartbeat of this whole series that I've done. Because we can smile and, and you're beautiful. So you can smile and be beautiful. And then that moment, you know, when you're going home and you're like, oh, my God, how do I deal? How do I deal with this aloneness? And so I had to tap back into myself and go back to when I was divorced. And do you know what? I used to roll around in my in my pill in my blankets like a cocoon. I would roll and roll and roll and tight real get real tight so I could be like, like I could feel someone was there. Yeah. So and that's what I don't me. think people I don't think people realize that component of it, Carla, in all no. honesty. It's no. it's not necessary of the intimacy sexually or any of right. that. It's just right. sometimes you just want that just like with a little kid. They just want their mother to wrap their arms around them and feel physically yes. feel somebody else just hold on to them. They ain't got to say nothing. They right. don't have to acknowledge anything. Just that feeling of knowing that for four seconds, five minutes, whatever it is, somebody was right. there long enough to hug those broken pieces that are falling back into place and say, okay, you know what? Through this hug, you may not be okay today. You may not be okay tomorrow, but right now I got you tight enough to where you'll be okay sooner or later. Sometimes that's right. all it is. And that right. is the harder part for me about being alone. I've always, I've been an only child. My son's an only child. I was around people, but they always had to go home. My mama was a single mama, so she was always at work. You know, my daddy, he was always at work when he was around. It was one of those things where I was always alone. So to be a grown woman still wanting to be loved and not wanting to be alone, alone those right. moments the hardest moment you will ever face because it's the reality right. that no matter how much you work on yourself, no matter how good you are, no matter how much you change or how much you conform, no matter what you do, sometimes there are just moments where there is nobody who is physically going to be able to do that for you. And over right. the course of my last year, I've been diagnosed with some um, mental health issues and some other things okay. that caused okay. me to have to face some things within me that say, hey, I really do understand. Y'all may not get it, but every right. now and then, I just need that hug. I just need somebody right. to sit there and say, it's okay to not be okay. Well, Naj made a point. She said that uh, what you said was very true. She also said being alone and being lonely are two different things, which is true. Now, here's what I wanted to say to you, which I think is very important. You have mentioned about being an only child. I am too. Uh, you had mentioned about your son going to college. My daughter went to college and she is now gone. But I have a son that's mm -hmm. nine, so he's still home. So I'm not alone completely, but you know, I, my daughter left. It still shifted the energy in my home. So things yeah. change. So here's the thing, and I, and I think this is why God has me doing this. Because now I'm now able to tell you what I went through because you inspired it through your poem the beautiful thing about what you said in your poem was the fact that the pillows made you have feel a sense of closeness but i also believe this is what i'm just prophetically receiving right now is that when you mentioned just now about the mental health uh, you had some mental health that you need to deal with and cope with that is probably the reason the spirit places us in our aloneness now here's the thing mm -hmm. The powerful thing about being alone is that we are now able, and I think I said this earlier, we're able to focus on self. Now, with your son going to college, our parenting style with, with adult college students are quite different than when they're little, and we have to demand things. We're now having to suggest to our, to our eldest child or to our, you know, to our, our college-bound child. So we now suggest rather than demand. And parenting. Right. 
So what I found, what was a challenge for me is, you know, it is, we all, you are also now going through another cycle of loss, even though, even though it's not a loss per se, like it was with your, uh, significant but it's like ooh, this is a loss too so it's a double whammy now the beautiful thing about this is when i had went through the loss of my daughter going to college a friend of mine stopped me i think she was about 15 and she stopped me and said let me tell you something don't go to everything and i thought what do you mean she said don't go to all activities for your daughter start to detach now because it's coming to where she's going to be leaving. And I didn't, I was like, oh my God, I never thought of that. But after she said that, I started to search for my reason of why I'm here. Why am I on the planet? And now, right. because I'm dealing with that, do, do I still have moments of having the issue with the wrapping around in the, in the sheets? Of course, I'm human. <laughs> We all have physical touch, touching needs. But here's the thing I wanted to encourage you. Start having a social circle of different male figure, male friends. Just male friends. You don't even have to have a boo thing. But having male friends will encourage you to, to begin relating to men. Not necessarily to get a boo or to get a man, but... Right. Having that man or male figure around you to encourage you, to um, empower you, this is where we mess up as women. We end up getting very constrictive because we're like, oh, my God, I'm alone. And, and we get kind of like, you know, we, we don't want to flirt too much because we don't want to bring on all that extra either. But we, we, we have attractions. But I think the best right. way for, for that helped me a lot was I started to encourage men. I started to be, um, you know, an advocate for men. I started to listen to men more than before. And because of that, man, listen, I began to re reinvent myself and start to re-love the feminine side of me. Because when we're alone, we start to pull more from the masculine side of ourselves because we have the higher demands of masculine things and roles that need to be accomplished, like doing the bills, doing the activity, right. mowing grass, stuff that a man would be doing. We now have to full fulfill that role. If we're not paying every man out here to do stuff, we have to now encourage that role in ourselves. So we become more demanding, more, you know, if you notice powerful women, um, that are alone, they're normally demanding and they, they get a little more masculine okay. acting because we have to pull from the masculine energy to balance ourselves out. So I was going well, to encourage you to what... get a lot of men around you to start supporting you. See, you know, it's ironic you say that. That's why I had to caveat after after you read my poem that this was an old emotion, but a brand new right. Because the right. topic resurfaced because I do, I, I hang out with a lot of guys. I have a great social circle. Yes. I, when I'm outside in the world and everything like that, I'm great. Like I said, my down moments are just my down moments. But I have a significant amount of male figures who I can just call and, you know, just in, for a second have a conversation with them about just life kind of things right. those are that's one of my biggest blessings and I've had the same good guy friends for about 20 years that I can wow. actually talk to and have deep conversations with and you know not feel ashamed or not hide behind anything which is right. probably one of the reasons why while going back to the comment about being lonely versus being alone while I feel alone I don't necessarily feel lonely. I know I am not by myself in any of these ventures. I know that I have good guys to back me up. I know I have great female friends as a support system. I know my empowerment team is ridiculous. Good. But the fact is, is I still end up getting to a place where there's an aloneness. It's not that I'm lonely. It just brings about an aloneness within me. So while I'm behind those doors... And while there's not necessarily anybody there in those quiet moments when I can really sit down and rationalize with myself, I have to be very honest and I have to tell myself, okay, you're good, 
Right. But you're still you're still alone. Yeah. Like this was one of my biggest fears in my life because I've always been alone is that I would be alone. And God did place me in this position to be alone for this moment because for my son moment, is it's his yeah. senior year in high school. I decided okay. to walk away because I was mentally unhappy from where we were staying to try and get myself in a better position. I've already made those kind of lifestyle changes that allow me to find out a little bit more of who I am, which involves a lot more of the self-actualization, self exploration exploration and the self realisticness yes. with you. You yes. have to be realistic with yourself at that point. You have to admit that while I sit here and I say that, yes, I'm okay. I am okay, but I'm lonely. And it is okay to say that, or I am okay, but I yes. am alone. And it is okay to say that because yes. you have to acknowledge where you are in the process yes. and the people who make you feel that way and who you feel you have to need, have a need to be around to stimulate you. You have to let them know that yes. regardless of how they respond, because the response is not up to them, but if they don't know that you feel like you need them in that moment, then it is your fault when you feel like they alienated you and they weren't there for you because you didn't tell them. Some people aren't that perceptive. Sometimes you just have to actually say, hey, I need you. You've done your part. The response is on them and you just have to be accepting of that. And sometimes by saying, hey, I need you, you may still end up feeling alone or lonelier than you felt right. beforehand because that person may not be able to give you what you need. And these are the reasons why we're placed in these situations because we need yeah, to yeah. be able to find out, do I stay with the pillows? Is it okay to sleep with these pillows? Can I move some of these pillows off the bed now? Yeah. Is it okay to let an actual person sleep here? Am I okay just sleeping yeah. in this moment by myself? You have right. to get to that point. But in order to do that, you acknowledge each and every little baby step, each and every fall, each and every everything. I will not say that all men are dogs. I see where there's that comment. What I will say is that even dogs have puppy stages. And to get them to be adult dogs takes training. It takes time. It takes patience. And these are things that we as Black women, because especially, like you said earlier, we're taught to be a little bit more powerful and a little bit more self-sufficient. We don't necessarily give to our black men. So we expect a lot more of them before they're even able to expect it of their self. So how are you going to sit there and tell a puppy not to go to the bathroom in that area if you haven't trained them that that area is off limits? So I will never say that all men are dogs. I will just say that everybody is their own portion of their journey. And if they haven't reached it with that person, unfortunately, you were just a stepping stone. I've been many a stepping stone. I've seen great good guys that were bad to me or that were not the greatest to me go on to become great men to somebody else and I had to be okay with that and I still have to when I look at them sometimes still have to go well damn we we, we was right there and you still just couldn't and I have to be okay with the fact that that was not my role my role may have just been to give them the options and the tools that they needed to learn how to be that better person and sometimes when you're like that it's going leave you a lot more alone than it is with someone and that feeling is not necessarily a feeling you can walk away from and I like what Nash said here she said um she said I'm an only child too she said I love this topic if you're lonely even in a relationship or when people are around you uh it will still be lonely um that was the lesson I had to learn in my marriage she said what helped me was to find my purpose and embrace my God-given gifts rather than focus on others to fill a void that wasn't within myself. Um, And I I like her comment. You know, I think a lot of times we we fall short with seeking purpose. We seek to find how to please our man. We seek to find how to please our children. We seek to find how to please our parents. We seek to find how to please others. But nine times out of 10, when are we ever thinking, how do I please myself? We don't. I know for me, it took me a long time to begin to say, you know what? I need to um, sit back and look at me. I need to sit back and think about how can I heal myself? How can I encourage myself to get better at what I need to do? And then once I get here to that point, then I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. And I think that since I've been in this, doing this alone series for a while, you know, um, it, it has been one of the anchors, I believe, with some of the women, uh, they have found, I think they have found themselves challenged because when they are alone, they feel like, oh my God, <laughs> I got a lot of responsibility that I didn't have before this, you know, um, they find themselves having to uh, set up different men and, and, 
doing different things for them to get the one man that they had that he was doing a lot of roles for them. They have to now figure <laughs> out what man can do what so they can get stuff done. Um, I just so want somebody to hang my curtains. I just yeah. want my curtains on. I want mean, somebody to hang my curtains. Yes, the little stuff. It, it really is. It's, yes. it's the little things that when you when you get there, while you know you can do them, because even in some relationships, I have also been doing a lot of that. Again, I accept my responsibility. I know where my faults come in at. Yes. So once you get used to that, it's just the fact that sometimes you just want, like, bruh. Right. Just slide the fifty dollars into the extra bank account because you saw it might be fifty dollars showed on the bill. Like magically delicious. I want something to just be right. there. So for once, I don't feel like I had to worry, which was fine. Once you get past that point though, the reality is for in order for somebody to find their purpose, they have to be se separated. Which is why as much as I hate to do interviews, as much as I might hate to perform sometimes and these things bring my nerves just to, to no end. <laughs> yeah, right. I so do them. I do them because people sit there and they, they tell me beforehand how much it might have helped or how much it must have touched something. So while I may not be able to fix me or, or necessarily give away and, and, and feel that part of me that's missing, I have the ability somehow, and I don't know how, to do it for other people. So while I may not like it, in my alone time, I found out that this is one of the things that I do that helps somebody else. So it may jack my own life up and I may feel like I'm going through the ringer and why do I have to keep being the one? But in the end, I get to hear somebody say, you know what, you help me. You may you may not help yourself, you may not feel like you help yourself, but you help me. Yes. And to, in order to find your purpose, you have to be separated because they say with, with elevation comes separation. So sometimes that separation yeah. is going to lead you to lonely because you can't hear when there's so much noise going on around you. You can't hear when there's so much else involved with it. And I know that's why I'm in this moment. And I yeah, have to I accept it. I don't write, like it. <laughs> I want people to write down what you said. I want people to write this down. Write down the fact that uh, own your emotions whatever they are you have a right to i mean let's just be realistic that that's the problem we get so mad because people are so emotional but they have a right to every one of these emotions when you are in a relationship whether it's a friendship whether it's a business partnership or whether it's a relationship per se you're going to get emotionally attached to somebody because you're bonding with that person you're letting them in you're letting them close so when they get mad allow them to be mad when they feel lonely allow them to feel lonely when they're angry allow them to be angry when they're overjoyed allow them to do that why because you have been accepted into that person yeah. that person accepted you it's like a friend request they ain't have to let you in but they did yeah. and so since they let you get in you have have to accept what comes with that person every yes. fault every flunder whether you like it or not you can help them be it better you can try yes. to enhance them you can tell them different things to you know that, that bother you and if they're willing to change then they change if not then you don't accept it and keep it pushing whatever the case but once that person accepts you you have to be willing to accept every portion of it so that means you accept whatever emotion they give you and you have to allow them to do so because how are people supposed to heal if we keep telling them to just get over it but don't allow them to go through it right. that's the problem i have with emotions you yeah. cannot sit there and say to somebody you should be over it by now you can't put a time limit on that because how much time did you allow that person to get into that so you expect them to only take half the time to climb out of that yeah. allow them to have their Powerful. emotions allow Powerful. Them to sit in their emotions because yeah. you cannot heal if you don't even acknowledge where you are hurting and if the minute we run past them emotions then we do not acknowledge them so we will never be able to heal so unfortunately i will bleed on the Every piece of paper I have, if that means I am able to say what I have to say when I can't say it to that person. Right. I may never be able to look at the person in the eye and say it, but I can say it to a million people. And sooner or later, it's going to hit your ears. And when it does, I have owned my emotion because I've been allowed to give that emotion to myself and then give it to you. What you do with it, on the other end, is your business. That ain't got nothing to do with me. God didn't tell me my plan, my plan, his plans for you. He told me his plans for me. So what your business is, I have nothing to do with that. But I can only own what I can own. Now, what I do remember, I got that same message from my dad. My dad used to say, are you angry at me? Are you angry? He's like, that's fine. You have a right to be. 
you don't, I mean, if you're angry, that's, I mean, I mean, it is your own right to feel whatever emotion it is you feel. But a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge when we're jealous, when we're feeling some type of way, when we're angry, when we're mad, when we're frustrated, when mm -hmm. we're disappointed. We don't want to talk about them because that doesn't look pretty. It's pretty when we put our makeup on, when we look fresh, when we get our hair done and all that. It's pretty. But when we're like with our hair up, pent up, looking crazy, wicked, you know, with a wife beater on and just short boy shorts and just relaxing um, with chip toenail pet polish, that's not cute. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to go out. I wouldn't go live with my toenails not done. You know what I'm saying? And show everybody, look at my toenails. They're flawed. We don't want and to show And that's so sad because we're all, we're all flawed. We're right. all flawed. We are, yes. And that's so sad. We're so worried about covering the shit up. We don't need band-aids for emotions. We do not. We need to let them things bleed because if not, they're going to fester. They're going to boil. And then that person is either not going to know how to express it or not express anything at all. And we were not made to be silent in this world, especially with our emotions. That's the one thing that we own and control. We ain't made to be silent with that. That's right. That's powerful. See, and you remember you were like so nervous about coming and I'm so glad you did because look at how much knowledge and wisdom you are giving. Um, you know, probably everybody's pretty busy this afternoon, you know, with, with family and everything, but when they sit down and they watch this powerful video about what we're talking about today, it will change lives. I've had so many inboxes from this series alone that I didn't even want to do. Remember, I told you, I was like, well, what am I going to do with this? When I got the message to do it, I fought against it because I just didn't think it was going to move. I've had more inboxes for this series, number one. Number two, I have had no um, concern about how many views I get. I'm always saying to the spirit, to, the, to, to God, like, just get it to who needs it. I don't care about how many people click on here and push play. I care about the people that need this because the other day I was, I woke up normal day and it was an empty room and it was like, you see this right here? The spirit tapped me. You see this right here? This is what people are facing. This is why you've had to do that series. We have to conglomerate and we have to talk about how we feel it is our right to be able to feel like I'm not alone because technically now, as you see, there's quite a few people on here. So obviously, if you feel what I'm saying, obviously, other people are curious about how we get through it. And we are not as alone as we, as we so think because when I started doing this series, I was like, man, there's a lot of people going through this. And it's just a transition. But I want to say this, I think it's very important that I reiterate how important it is that during our time of aloneness, let's not think or assume or believe that it's a life sentence, a life sentence of being alone. Because if we tap into our purpose and if we tap into our magnetism and we stay relatable and we stay in our our own personal shine, and we love ourselves unconditionally, we will find that not only will we find someone significant in our life, but many significant people in our life. And there may oh, yeah. be a time when we have various people that are like, don't stop doing what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Sometimes we don't have to have them in our bed next to us, but sometimes we can have them on an inbox. You see what I'm saying? Or somebody, somebody can just exactly. say, I really, you changed my life. You know, that is more, just as equivalent as having someone next to you. It's just yeah. like I said, it's a transition, but we don't have to own this as being a finality. It's not final all the time. You're not fine. I'm only going to be here. We're here as a, like I say, it may just be a pit stop. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And in our pit stop, we don't want to be in that stop miserable the whole time. Like, I hate it. I wish this. I wish that. <laughs> it's like this grin comes over your life and you can't enjoy. Oh, my God. Right. I can actually go to the movies and enjoy it and get popcorn for me. I can actually go and eat a meal in my own piece and not have to worry about somebody else. 
I can actually go to the mall and shop and not have to worry about what time are we leaving? Just stuff like that, you know, the little stuff. Yeah. Um, and you I find out who you are. Yeah. You really find out who you are. And that's, yes. I think that's a harder mirror for people to confront. When you find out who you are, you find out things you may or may not have liked about yourself that have been that whole, that way the whole entire time. And I think sometimes that aloneness is more scary not necessarily because there's nobody on the other side of the bed and just those pillows, but because for the first time you have to face the things you were running from within yourself. And I think that's a bigger portion of the fear and of the hatefulness and of the despisingness of being in that position. I think that's why a lot of people wake up. Once you settle in that and once you're okay with the fact that you're going to wake up to this mirror that's going to show you things that you may not have been okay with or you may not have seen within yourself, once right. you're okay with that, then you can get okay with being in the aloneness and your days will come, but they won't take over you. Yeah. And that's kind of more so where I'm at. Okay. I understand that I am in this position for a reason. I understand that it is okay for my pillows to still be over there. Yeah. I understand it is okay for me to sleep on the couch because at the same time, I understand a lot more about me than I did six months before I made this decision I understand I like to cook for myself and I might not necessarily like going out to eat all the time with my family I understand that I really do like making making drinks and I could have been a bartender I understand that I like reading again I understand that sometimes all I want to do is wash clothes and be able to say I've put them up and folded them and put them away in the same day because that's an accomplishment those are the things that I would not have learned about myself if I would not have been alone and in order to do that, once you get to that portion where you're accepting of that mirror that you're waking up to on those four empty ass walls with nobody else sitting there with you, right. you will be okay with the accepting of being alone or yeah. being lonely, whichever one you're in in your position. It's just you're going to have your days. And I think that's where yeah. people get it, get it messed up because right. you don't just come out of it. Yeah. You don't just get over it you don't just go through it it's a process so even 10 years down the road you may grieve that same day over and over and over again right. and you may not know why but you may wake up on that 11th year and not grieve that day anymore yes. but it takes getting to that point and you're not going to do that over if you that. have not sat in your alone and been okay with it yes. so while i'm not okay every day with being alone yes. i am okay at this part of my journey knowing that it is part of something greater in the end and that's why I can sit there and write a piece and say, yeah, it's an old emotion, but it's a new piece. Does it open it. some old wounds? Yes, because they're still not healed. And in order for me to heal, sometimes I got to peel off that scab, let that joint breathe a little bit again, let that infection clear itself back out, and let the actual new skin start to grow. Why? Because sometimes it might not have healed right the first time. That's so It happens. That way. Yes. Well, what I love about what you said that was powerful just then is that you're allowing yourself to heal and reheal. We don't always heal everything the first time we heal ourselves. There's other elements of our hurts through the through the years, um, even just disappointments that we maybe have went through and we're like, well, you know, I just kind of brushed over that disappointment and moved uh -huh. on and didn't really realize how much it burned. It might have been a third degree burn. But I just acted like it didn't happen. So I'm just going to act like it didn't Everything happen. Else and kept going. Yeah, and kept going. And now it's it, it something happened in my current life. And I'm like, someone brushed up against that third degree burn. And it's like deep. And I didn't know yep. that it was still there. So it's a power in what you're doing. Please don't stop writing. Um <laughs> It is beautiful. You know, um, we share, we share a lot. I didn't know. I didn't know you were an only child like me. I didn't know we were, we both are poets, you know, single moms, you know, both have, you know, college bound children. It's beautiful. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing that the loan series brought me to you. And I'm very, yeah. very, very happy and consider you now a very close sister friend. Um, I'm so honored that you came here because again, you didn't have to. Um, even in your fear, you were like, I don't know. I'm like, you can do it, you know? And, um, it, it's very humbling because I want people to put a face to what we're going through. And I also want people to understand that it's just a pit stop. That's it. It's not like we're, it's an end all to be all. And we just don't know what the future is going to hold. And what's so beautiful about this is we can speak to it. We can tell other yeah. people. 
about what this is. So when you have other peers and friends and hey, even strangers come up and they're like, man, I'm feeling some type of way. Well, what is it? Oh, I just got out of a marriage or whatever. You're like, man, listen, you are not abnormal. And we can actually build a network of people that have actually went through this and really embrace everyone. Because I think when you, anytime we deal with anything, when we deal with it alone, it's harder to, it's harder to deal with. But when someone else is like, I've been there, you know, cause like yes. that's what was so power about your, powerful about your poems. Like I've been there. I wasn't necessarily lining up the pillows, but I was rolling in those sheets, you know, trying to help myself getting comfortable and, you know, um, not so alone in the bed. So I was able to take what you said and, and, and it's like, man, she is on it. She knows what I'm talking about. And it, it just, it brought a closeness that I would have never had had I not read your poem. And, and I appreciate that because half the time I tell everybody, I, I just literally throw some stuff out, throw some words together and call it a day. I never really consider myself a poet. I, this is more my therapy. I am, my health insurance is, is good, but it ain't great. So the deductible is a little high. So, you know, multiple therapist visits are not in the cards all the time. But in order to be able to express it, I ha you have to come to a point where you, can sit there and say, I have to start looking at alone, aloneness or the feeling of being alone from every perspective. Yeah. Because there are going to be those that are very happy about their aloneness. There are going to be those that are very sad. And then there may be you somewhere in the middle. And in order to understand the different phases of it, in order to go ahead and get further and further and further along, you have to literally be able to stop seeing solely from your perspective and look at the alone from everybody else's perspective. Because what you see as alone may not necessarily be alone. And you might find different reasons to count your joy that you're not as alone as you thought you were. Right. Somebody <laughs> else may not necessarily have anything no friends no loved ones no nothing to actually go through that process with them and once you start realizing that there are different ways to be alone and that you are not just the only one sitting in that same amount of lone aloneness and that you have not yet gotten to that point where that girl over there is but since she's over there and she's gotten to that point sooner or later you're gonna get there you know you have to be able to have those different phases for you to be accepting of it because in order to get out of being alone in order to get to that portion you have yeah. to go through it you got to walk through fire in order to see if you cannot get burned by this storm and you're not going to do that if you have somebody sitting there holding fireproof fabric over you covering you through the fire yeah. you have to be able to without it and that's what our alone time does for us it's not a good place to sit in it's not the the best place to sit in it's a humbling place it's a place where you're allowed to have a moment of peace because we don't always get the peace that we kind of need yeah. the moment where we are allowed to say okay what are we really okay with because you were accepting of all this other stuff in these relationships but yet you're still alone and all after all these relationships yeah. so what is it that you're accepting of and were you really accepting of it or were you accepting of it for that person and now that that person is on are you still going to be accepting of it when the next one comes along you get to figure out what it is that you may not have worked through or worked around or worked on in those things and really sit down and look and say okay now that I figured it out, here's another piece to the puzzle. Because this puzzle is going to continuously be getting built. It's about how you construct it as you go to the picture it's made. And yes. that's where we're all having a problem. Because we're accepting of what everybody projects onto us, but we're not necessarily accepting about what we see in ourselves. Our long time forces us to do that, even yes. when we don't want to. And yeah. that's the harder part. And that's why there is such a big difference between being alone and being lonely. That's why you can be lonely in a relationship. You can be oh, alone yeah. in a relationship just yeah. like you can if you are single. Because if you oh, haven't yeah. healed those aspects, you're just going to pick somebody else who only fills the void. And you can only pour into a cup for so long before it overflows and doesn't hold anything else. Eventually, you stop pouring into that cup because you see there's nothing left to give. If that water sits there. It's going to evaporate out so that person who is looking to get that something sought after from somebody else and doesn't feel that in their alone time is going to get what they need poured into them but eventually it's going to overflow and they're going to stop accepting of whatever's being poured because it no longer fills them the way that it used to it no longer keeps them whole and eventually they're going to still be alone or lost in that relationship so it's yeah. more so about in that moment 
accepting your pillows, accepting them to be yeah. that person to hold you tight or that person to cry or accepting your cocoon because co from cocoons come butterflies, accepting that portion of your ashes becoming the phoenix. You have to be accepting of that because not everybody that you feel like you need or that should you feel like should be there is going to be there in that alone time because your alone time is for you. And the quicker you accept yeah. that, the better you'll be able to move through your stages. And that's yeah. kind of where teeter tot at i accept it but i'm still having trouble moving through my stages because i'm human right and i still want what i want yeah. so even though i accept it letting go of my want is a whole different thing so that's, i have to be oh, alone we can't get it in that. oh see we can't we can't go oh, past that we can't go past that now you know you just <laughs> you just hit something that was a one this is 24 karat gold what you just said right there you so have to let alone. go of what you want that's what your alone time is there for you. Your alone time is going to put put you there with every weight, with every bucket of water you carry, with every world on your shoulder you felt like you picked up. It's going to put you right in the middle of... I, I have another piece that talks about a relationship with God. And unfortunately, it says, if my relationship with God was with God, then my favorite word would be shit because I feel like I was left alone, naked, standing right in the middle of it the closer I got to him. And that's what happens. When you are in your alone time, you sit right in the middle of it. The closer you get to coming out of your alone time, the more you're going to sit down with because you're unpacking bag after bag after bag. And until you let go of bags that you held on because you wanted them, you're not going to be able to pick up the bags you're supposed to take with you until your next journey. So you're going to sit in that alone time just a little bit more. This, and that's where it makes it hard. Our, this is our poison right here. Our one. Uh-huh. Our wants is our poison. See, the thing about it is what we want isn't always what we need. This is where I, I, I tell people all the time, my, my funny story. I tell people that I got out of the car of life and I got out on the side of the road and I told God, I am not driving this car of life anymore. I'm going to get out of the car and get in the passenger seat. Look and buckle up. I'm not going to touch Let the gear shift. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna touch the gear shift. I'm not gonna try to put my foot over there on the brake shift. I'm not gonna touch any of the gears at all. I'm not gonna yell and scream. I want you not to turn that way. I want to turn this way. I'm going to let go of all control. Now, when I did that, did it happen so beautifully as I'm saying it? Hell no. I was kicking, screaming, always at God's heavenly door every minute. Knocking on it, knocking on it, knocking on it. I know you hear me. Yeah. I know you hear me. Let me in. <laughs> You know it's me. You know it's me. I don't like this way we're going. I'm calling you. <laughs> yes, you know. And so when I'm pounding on the door and I'm like, you know what though? Let me get. Let me. Let me hush. And you know, I kept. I, I make it funny and say, you know, God kept looking over at me. You sure you want to do this? Because you know you've kind of got control issues. You know you have wants. You have to have. You have to yeah. have this and you have to have that. Even in your mates, you have to have this. You have to have that. And I got to the point where I was like. I think I'll, I, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to try to manipulate because I was a big time manipulator. If I wanted him, I was going to do I'm, everything I'm, in my power to get that one. That's the one I want. Yep. And so um, when, when I dial back off of the manipulation of trying to curtail into what I wanted a man to be to me and all this other stuff, and I want him this, and I like him to be this tall and this kind of job, and I want him this and that. And I got rid of all those wants and said, just give me what I need. I just said, God, just give me what I need. I don't, I don't even care about all that stuff. You know what I like. You know what I need. Just give me what I need. I'm not going to worry about all that extra no more. But it was hard to get there because I did not gracefully, I mean, if, if you were to see me <laughs> spiritually, I was kicking and screaming like a kid, like having full-blown, grown-ass tantrums. Yes, yep. because I want this this way. I want my want this way. And yep. it was not easy. It was not easy to just let go of the reins and, and let go of the wants. That was one of the challenges, one of the biggest challenges for me. Nobody wants to accept the fact that what they want might not be what they need. Which right. is, it, it took right. me, it, even now, I, I, there's still several, several relationships that 
are hard for me to let go because it is harder for me to establish it. While that may be what I want or while this, this portion of this person may be what I want, it may not necessarily be what I need. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, in, in the alone time, unfortunately, you get to really examine that. Your fuse gets a little bit shorter with that person because you start to realize that while I want you, or while I want this portion of you, or while I want this from you, you're not giving it to me in the manner in which I want it. So therefore, you either don't have it to give, or it's not mine to get, or I'm not supposed to have it yet. Right. Because there are people, I will never sit there and say that the person you want or the person you feel like you're in love with is not supposed to be the person you need. I'm never going to say that. I don't know anybody's will of fortune love plans. I don't. Right. <laughs> but what I know is sometimes... The person you want may be the person you need and may be the person you're supposed to be with, but they may not all happen at the same time. And you have to also be accepting of that because you may want them today, but you don't need them today. They're not ready for you. They could be poison to you. You could be poison for them today. They may still have a portion of their journey they ain't came face to face with yet. Y'all's time may not just have been here or y'all's time may have just been up. Yeah. And it's those little intricacies that make it a little bit more different because you're throwing in the human aspect of it all when you're talking about time, patience, waiting, aloneness, and all that stuff. You're throwing in the irrational portion, which is the person, period. Period. And, and that's the harder part because while we're accepting of these and our rational brain is telling us and our mental brain is telling us and sometimes our body parts are telling us that this ain't what we need, you really know you should not go back there because last time you did it, you was trying to climb out of that thing for five more months. You know this. Yeah, yeah. But there's something within it that keeps you there because maybe it just ain't y'all time. Right. And maybe that means both of y'all need to sit in your aloneness or you need to go to your corner and do what you need to do for you. Because maybe once you come out of that, that person was already ready. But God said y'all wasn't ready together because you hadn't sat in your aloneness. And you got to be accepting of that, too. And these yes. things don't happen if you no. don't sit in that sector of your aloneness and just unpack them bags. And as unfortunate think, as it is and as much as it hurts. What I think is powerful that you said that is intricate, and I think this is very important, is when you have someone that um, you are trying to manipulate. And I'm not saying that every person that's in a relationship is trying to manipulate their person they want to be with. But just in, right. in general, we as humans have a tendency to want to fix it the way we want it to be. So what I tell people, and a lot of times I have people that say different various things on Facebook, and we laugh and joke about it. But one lady posted, I don't want to fall in love again. And I told her, good idea. Try growing in love because when you fall, you don't know if they're going to catch you or not. And I think we don't allow ourselves to evolve into whatever it's going to be. We have so many preconceived notions of what we want it to be that we don't just yep. take all of those preconceived notions and, and get rid of them and allow whatever it's going to be to be. And then when you see that happen, and then you also have to tap in, like you talked about your God. So obviously you're a spiritual woman. When you're talking about having God's involvement with it, it's very unique because it's not, it's not like the movies. <laughs> it's not. Right. If you talk to people right. that have real fulfilled, wholesome, solid, intimate relationships that are really spiritually bound, not based upon what we like with our eyes. But you talk to those couples, you understand that they didn't even, they weren't even looking at each other like that. There wasn't a lustful space when they got together. It was a spiritual, it was a spiritual uh, pull on right. each other. And so when you find out, oh, so it's not always necessarily me looking through my physical eyes. I say it all the time. We look through our physical eyes at what we like to see. We want our mate to be, but we don't really look right. at we should see ourselves through the eyes of the person we're in love with or who we want to partner with. If I don't see me in you, then we don't match. And it's okay. We can still be cool. We can still have friendship. We can still be affectionate towards each other. You're just not my partner. And that's okay. You can still be in my life too. That's the thing that's so funny is we try to omit people. Oh, you're not it. Okay, I'm going to pass you on. You're not it. I'm going to pass you on. No, we don't have to get rid of people. We can just move on in our life and continue having interaction with them because they may still have an importance in our life. They just may not be the main significant partner. And a lot of times I don't think we think about the fact that some men 
have various reasons in our life. Not all, not one man can take care of every single aspect of us. I don't care what man you're in, even if you're married, there's going to be some shortcomings your spouse is going to have. Same with your boyfriend, it's going to be some, some yep. shortcomings. So why get rid of people that are in our lives because they're not the permanent, they're not the permanent statue in our life. They're not our significant other. They're not our husband or whatever. It's like, no, let's look at it for what it's worth that this person has evolved in my life. We have a, we have a good residence with each other. We are able to connect well. We, we, we vibe, we hate, we enjoy each other's company. Why should I omit them out of my life? Why? That's crazy. See, but, do that. but you know what? That goes back to the whole, if you haven't sat in that room full of BS with that particular <laughs> bag. In all honesty, because if, you, if this is somebody who you had more of a connection with than just a friendship, and you go from having that connection to then trying to learn how to again be friends, you need to sit in your alone time and unpack that bag because this is a whole new bag. It's you need to unpack that emotional feeling that you had for them. Yeah. Of course, you're not going to want them around in your life in that capacity if you have not unpacked that bag because then you're still going to feel like there should be something more. You're still going to feel like we should be able to go further. You're still going to harbor that same feeling when you look at them. You're going to get that googly-eyed emotion. If you haven't unpacked that bag. So if you want them to be just friends, then the truth is you need to separate yourself from that person for a little while. Sit in what happened in y'all situation learn what you need to change learn if you can be a friend with the person because realistically some of these people we think that we can still be friends with we cannot be friends with because that bag that we need to unpack is way too heavy and what's in it we can't necessarily unpack the way we should to be real friends with them and you have to figure that out but if you go from one day y'all smashing and y'all laid up and y'all booed up and y'all talked about everything to the next day you supposed to be okay to cope with seeing him with his new boo thing and just talking to him about life if you ain't unpacked that bag how are you going to realistically sit in that and do that without an anger without a resentment without a jealousy without a hurt without any emotion right to be a friend with somebody you used to be intimately with you need to walk away from them for a little bit sit in your own bs about what happened in that situation sit in every emotion of that and get through that and if on the other side of that you still feel like you need that person in your life as a friend then you go get your friend yeah. but you go get a friend you right. can't blur the lines at that point you can't just let them creep back every now and then because y'all felt good or it felt like old times sake, or you needed somebody right in that moment because then that means you still ain't unpacked that bag and that's not a friendship that's something that's holding on to keeping you from going to the next level because you're never going to find love if you're still sitting in that moment and that emotion and that person is still sitting right there holding your hand at the bus stop <laughs> they going home they texas they right. going home and they with their wifey or their girlfriend or whatever the case may be but yes. they sitting at the bus you waiting on your bus to come to put you on the bus and send you about your business because that's what they do to you right but if you have to set that's that's if you haven't sat in that alone time if you've sat in that alone time yes. then you can sit there and leave the restaurant shake hands and say i'm gonna go this way you gonna go that way and we'll see each other when we see each other and you're okay with it and you're okay so until you in it, you can't just sit here and say I can be friends with people or I need to kick them out. You need to figure out where they belong in your life because they wouldn't have been in that portion of your life at any point if they didn't belong there for some reason. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of exes that are still friends, which is ugly really? even from high school. Sometimes it can be a little ugly, but they also remind me of things I needed to be reminded of every now and then. When yes. I had very abusive exes, some of these mm -hmm. exes would still be the one going, how is that possible? Remember when you used to get in my face and whoop do whoop and you defended us? And they would remind me of right. who I was who because I needed to remind me of that. Yes. So they were yes. meant to stay. But right. if I hadn't unpacked my PS with them, I might have kicked out somebody who was meant to remind me that I had more fire in me than I had defeat. Yes. And that's not what we're supposed to do. So right. you're going to have to see that. You're going to have to wallow in that. You're going to have to have your moments. And if they tell you to get over it, then tell them to kiss you behind because it's your emotion, it's your feeling, it's your timetable. Right. But in order for you to figure out where people are seasons and where people are reasons and where they're lessons, you kind of got to sit alone with that stuff. As yes. ugly as it is, you got to sit alone with that stuff so you can hear you and you can hear whatever God. I'm not the most spiritual person, but I do know that there is something, whether it's your God, his God, somebody else's God up there that runs this show. I know that. 
So right. you got to sit alone with that person, that God, whatever it is, and yo, and that, that little bag of BS, and you got to plunder through it. Right. And it's only until after that that you can figure out whether these person, people are still supposed to be there. Because some exes really are there, so they can sit there and point out and be like, nah, B, remember when I used to treat you like that? He's starting to treat you just like I treated you, and you couldn't take that from me, and I think you deserve better. Yes. You yes. Some of that stuff. Yes. You need somebody to and check you and go, how are you treating this good man over here when I used to do the same crap? I used to dog you, do a thousand things worse, and you treated me like, go, you over here treating him like crap. What is wrong with you? You need those yes. people around you, but yes. if you unpack your alone time, yes. you're not going to figure out who's there for your betterment. Oh. It don't matter if you have any kind of relationship going, going behind you. What matters is what's going before you. Right. And if they're supposed to be there, then you need to find out their purpose in being there. Sometimes he could be there to defend you from all these other Negroes that you ain't got no business going with just to end up still being the one that you were supposed to be with in the first place. Right. But you're not going to know until y'all sit there and unpack that and you go through your stages individually to get to where you're supposed get to be. Where you're supposed to be. That's right. That's right. Sitting in that alone time, as ugly as it is, as hurtful as it is, as many times as you want to sit there and say, no, nah, I ain't okay. I ain't like waking up and just making a one meal breakfast. Do you know how hard it is to make a meal for one person? I swear I have never thrown out so much food in my life. And these are the things that I don't like about being alone, but there are also things that I don't have to necessarily care about. So stop buying so much food. Put right. half of it in the freezer. Take it right. to the homeless shop. They have solutions. Yes. So because of that, I at least have ways to figure out things that I wasn't going to figure out if somebody else was standing right there with me the whole time mm -hmm. holding my hand. Better talk about it. You aren't kidding. You're right. And I see, this is why I love this. Like I said, I, I mean, I don't want to keep you no longer. I know you got family time and everything. And, and it's humbling <laughs> that you're here and, and really spill, spilling the wisdom that people need to know. Um, I think it's it's a challenge for many people that really don't understand that there is a power that we carry. Um, we are energy. We are energy. We are suitable for being on this planet alone and alone by ourselves. And we are also we're also in that time preparing for the next phase. It doesn't mean that that's going to be your end all to be all. But we have to also face reality. If that's my end all to be all, damn it, I'm going to wear this aloneness to the best of my ability, but I'm still going to have all kinds of people that are anchors in my life. I don't have to be yep. lonely. I can have anchors that will help me, that will see to me, that will give me those hugs I need, that will cuddle with me at night when I need it, that will be there if I need them, that will fix my drains or fix my shower curtains when I, they're yep. falling down. So there's means of being creative. We have created, we have creative minds because we are human. So sometimes we got to be creative on how we fix and mold our life. So the aloneness isn't so um, overpowering because it, everything is about balance. People say balanced meals all the time. You have to have a balanced meal. You have to have a balanced diet, all of those things. Well, that applies also to our aloneness. We have to balance. Yeah. So that means that if you have to have social contact, if you have to have someone to hug you and hold you, if you have to have certain things in your life, even sexually, these things needs to be addressed to you. Only your business. You don't got to tell people why I have somebody I'm intimate with. That's not nobody. Uh -huh. But you have to have your needs met accordingly. And it may not be in the constituted uh, realm of everybody else telling you you got to be in a relationship, you got to be married, you got to be this, you got It may have to be a creative type of style thing. And that is okay. We have to get away from thinking our life has to be molded and shaped in to what we have to have because someone else told us we have to have it that way. We can have it the way we want to have it. And we can be creative on how we do what we do. If only people understood how much conforming can sometimes be detrimental to a person. Not everybody is meant to be put into a box and meant to conform to something. And that's, that's the bigger thing when it comes to relationships and stuff like that. We're all taught a certain standard of it. So if we don't meet that standard, we've not only disappointed ourselves, but feel like we've disappointed society's expectation of us. Right. Until you finally accept the fact, I, I had to really come to the realization, my family did too, 
nothing about me is ever going to fit into society's little small behind box. Right. That means my emotions aren't, my heartbreaks aren't, my love isn't, my healing isn't, nothing. And that is okay. And that's yeah. what I think we get so caught up in. We get so caught yeah. up in making it look so good, making sure when we go out, our hair is all wrapped up. There are days, anybody who really knows me on a personal level knows you hardly ever see me looking a hot mess. Right. Hardly ever. Right. So if I look a hot mess and I'm out somewhere where you can visibly see me, it's not a good day. Right. But it was good enough because I had panic attacks. So if I'm sitting in that moment and I come out the house and I look like that, then that tells me it was good enough to where I was still able to pick myself up, get myself dressed, wash my face, brush my teeth, and get up out my house. And I have to stop and pat myself on the back for small little moments like that because I might look a hot mess out there to y'all, but y'all don't know what kind of fight I went through to get out that door. And that's what (laughs) and that's what being alone is forced to teach you sometimes. Yes. It's how to be okay with yes. being a hot mess yes. and still being able to walk out into the world and say, I'm a hot mess today. I'm right. a hot mess tomorrow. I might be a hot mess sometime next week, but I'm not a hot mess every single day. That's and right. for that, I am okay. And that's okay. where it comes in. When you can get to that point, you, you go. Yes. Well, I appreciate you so much, Carrie, for this show, for your beauty, for your story, for your poem. Um, and I'm honored, like I said, I'm honored that you came on and, and took out your time of your holiday and the time you could be spending with your family. You shared it with me. I take that very, very well. Um, and I, oh, it's very, you. it's very, uh, encouraging for me because like I said, I'm at the grassroots level. Look, I'm just out here doing the thing. I don't get paid for this. I do this to encourage the people. And so because of that, you know, I, I'm honored that you took your time out to be here. Um, so whenever you're ready to share your piece so everybody can hear it, it is your time um, to do that. And, I am I, and um, I'm hoping I'll just, uh, uh-oh, I hope we didn't lose her. But she was going to share her piece, and, um, and then we're going to close it up. Anybody? Um, see here, uh, Abram, you were you were saying that um, it's not true that um, you know everybody, all men are dogs, and and you know that's true. No, all men are not dogs, and I agree, one hundred percent. You know, I'm an advocate for men, so that is totally against my beliefs. I I do know that um, there are men that make mistakes. But that does not mean that they are dogs. You know, we all have made mistakes, women and men. So because of that, um, let's not believe that one sex or species on the planet is is um, considered a dog or, or even on either side because that's not true. Um, and I'm glad that you were here. Um, also, uh, you're right. You do want to stand in love and, and or you could stand in hate. And we don't want to do that either. You know, being that you were standing in hate is not really a healthy thing to do. So uh, I am reconnecting uh, Carrie so she can share her piece. And then we're going to, I'm going to let you guys, see you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday and your holidays with your family. So um, let's let her join back in. There we go. I'm so sorry about that. No, you're fine. You still there or did we lose you again? <laughs> no, it, it, apparently, because I'm, I'm on my cell phone since I was in the car, so I'm trying to have the piece pull up, and every time I move it on. So um, I'm going to see if I can get through it. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Are you there? Okay, I see you now. Yeah, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you now. Yep. Okay. The problem is it's pausing every time I have to scroll up on my Gmail because I've got you in one app and it on the other. So I'm not going to be able to do it without interruption. Oh, you're fine. um, Because I have to scroll at least once. But um. This, this is the piece that I guess inspired this conversation. Yes. I sleep with so many pillows on the bed. That way I don't forget what it feels like to have someone sleep beside me. 
The only problem is when I hug, they don't hug back. When I cry, they don't have arms to throw around me or lips to whisper shit will be okay. And that's why I'm never rushing to bed. To me, place where a house is made a home. Where love is made not in the sexual, I'm simply speaking intimately. See, my friends laugh because I fall asleep more on the couch than in my bed. But my couch doesn't remind me I'm alone. It's perfectly made for my single because it barely fits just me. And when I roll over, there's no empty space and I don't have to fill it with pillows to fill the void. It's built perfect for my lonely. It holds it perfectly. I don't find myself overthinking the emptiness or questioning the loneliness or looking at the empty space with longing, wishing that me and that one ex could have made it work so I wouldn't have so much space that simply screams love does not live here anymore or does not make me feel like a house is not meant for. And it's silly because they say it's just a bed. While I say, I sleep with so many pillows on the bed that way I don't forget what it feels like to have someone sleep beside me. Hug, they don't hug back. When I cry, they don't have arms to throw around me. A lips to whisper shit will be okay. And, and maybe that's why I really don't sleep. And that piece is called The Bed I Made. The Bed I Made, girl. Beautiful. I'm so glad you were here. Like I said, um... And it, it's just really inspiring because that, that power in that poem was just awesome. Um, please come back. We would love to have you come back another time. And um, you were so, so awesome to listen to. Um, you kicked so much knowledge on here. I'm a, I hope they will let me save it so I, can, so I can cut it up, man. I need Instagram to hear this. You know, it was so powerful. Um, there's so many good thing, words of wisdom. And like I said, um, it, it doesn't go unnoticed that, you know, we all have our trials. But in some way, shape, or form, God allows us to meet beautiful people and um, where we can connect. And, and actually, we can be like, you know what? I had that, too. Um, so that's yeah. that's just the beautiful thing, um, being able to um, be a part of uh, of this evening or actually this afternoon that we are able to really, you know, restore we don't know who was watching today, but we we had the chance to restore someone's, even someone's perspective of seeing something different. And I think I say it a lot that, you know, our truth is our perception. So if we just tweak our perception just a little bit, if we can look at our, our, our grim and just shift it slightly to pleasure, we can find it, ooh, I can enjoy my aloneness. Let me see what I can do today, today that while I'm alone and nobody's telling me they need me to do this or do that. Let me see what I can get done for me. Um, me yeah. You know, and, and that's when you start finding the joy in it. Um, but again, like I said, Carrie, it was awesome to have you here. Um, and I appreciate you so much. Uh, and, and like I said, send me your, your, um, your address because I want to send you a gift. Uh, for being on okay. the show, yeah, I always send oh. a little gift to my to my people that come on because as it was your time, um, it's definitely an honor for you to uh, to have been here. So I appreciate you, love you, sis. Please keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop writing Thank because you. obviously <laughs> it's a God given gift that will inspire many. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. As much as this topic was a little taboo for me, I really enjoyed it. I appreciate the conversation, and thank you for seeing so much in my piece. That's that's a really humbling thing. I appreciate well, you. I appreciate you as well. So like I said, come back next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm going to have another beautiful sister on. She had talked about um, how, you know, so many people are broken. And so I'm going to talk about that next week. We're going to talk about how... You know, a lot of us are walking around in pieces, but people see us as whole, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but we're really broken mm -hmm. from the inside. So join us next week. Girl, that Super Bowl is amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, I hope you can come next week if you can, and we'll be here again at 12 o'clock next week. <laughs> so everybody, Bye. thanks so much for being here and, and staying on. Sherez, Abram, uh, James. 
Naj, everybody that came on, and make sure to share this video. I see a couple have already shared it, so share, share, share. Um, and oh, make wow. Sure here. Yeah, make sure that you're here uh, next Sunday at 12 noon again, and um, I thank you guys so much for being here. It's Carla Nicole, the beautiful Carrie Conley, signing off, everybody. Best kept. Have a great day. Bye.